Well, there's lots of uh, scary stuff to observe up in space, but there's also scary yeah. things going on down here on Earth that satellites catch. Yeah, they catch it all. Uh, I recommend you Staying in your put homes. some pants on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are tons of weird things people have spotted on satellite images uh, in Antarctica. In 2017, this strange dome-like structure was spotted. There were all kinds of conspiracy theories floating around at the time that this could have been something built by some lost ancient civilization or an alien race. There's also this one here. Another dome looking object which looks to have an opening on the side, almost like some sort of structure built into the ground. A YouTuber named Mr. MBB333 first spotted it. The object looks to be about 150 feet wide and certainly looks man made to me. As for exactly what it is, I don't know, the entrance to a secret military base perhaps, maybe a secret alien base? What's also interesting is that this area is apparently a no-fly zone because of an air sampling camp in the area. Apparently there was also a team of scientists that went missing for a whole week and were picked up from this location by a flight crew. All of that info had been shared by a former naval officer and a letter sent to investigative journalist Linda Moulton Howe. Who knows? Who knows what's going on over there? Next on the list, we have an image captured of Tycho, the zombie star. Now, if you're wondering, what the heck is a zombie star? Allow me to enlighten you. It's a star that died in a fiery explosion and then came back to life by sucking the matter out of other surrounding stars. Now, think about that while keeping in mind that our sun, the thing that gives us life, is also a star. Very nice. Zombie stars are generally referred to as type A supernovas, with a supernova being the biggest explosion that humans have ever seen, each one the extremely bright and super powerful detonation of a single star. So I guess in the simplest of terms available to the space sciences, zombie supernovas are that. Twice. But that's not even what makes this photo of Tycho so scary. It's the fact that scientists believe that they can use Tycho as a way to practically measure dark energy. While it's currently just a working theory, dark energy is basically an anti-gravity force that fills the universe with negative pressure, expanding and stretching the very fabric of space and time. Think of dark energy as helium filling up a balloon, and the balloon as the universe. The dark energy helium pushes against the parameters of our universe balloon, making it grow bigger and bigger at a very rapid rate. Now, lucky for us, the universe isn't actually a balloon, so we don't really need to worry about it popping, but you might consider what would happen if due to expansion our planet became too far away from the sun. Spoiler alert, we would all die. Kazakhstan is another area of Earth where strange things have been captured on satellite images. In the remote deserts, all these ancient patterns have been spotted, etched into the Earth. The geoglyphs are massive, and there are all sorts of shapes, crosses, squares, rings, even swastikas. All have been dug into the ground or made by rocks. The geoglyphs in Kazakhstan are part of what is called the Turgay Trough, an area where over 260 of these mysterious designs have been found. The most famous of these is the Ustugaisky Square. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. But it's a large square formation with diagonal lines crossing through it, stretching about 900 feet on each side. And these patterns are believed to be thousands of years old. But as for who made them and why, that's still a mystery. The fact that these patterns have survived for so long though is remarkable. Another cool thing, they were virtually unknown until they were spotted from space. They were first spotted in 2007 by a man named Dimitri Day while he was searching through Google Earth's satellite images. Next up, we have this image of a pumpkin star, a star that spun so fast it actually flattened itself into the shape of a gourd. If you're wondering how the heck this could happen, allow me to explain. You see, pumpkin stars are actually created by the merging of two separate sun-like stars, which is why they spin so fast and create the shape that they do. It's like when two line dancers hook arms and swing each other around the room using the rotations from the other to improve the speed of their own until they merge into one massive pumpkin-shaped country music fan. 
Guess it's not exactly like that, but it's pretty similar. Anyways, the rare star, or should I say stars, as astronomers have discovered 18 of these guys since May of 2009, were found using X-ray detection and star mapping, as well as satellites. This worked incredibly well because these Halloween-ready catastrophic supernovas waiting to happen produce X-rays at levels more than 100 times the peak levels of X-ray production ever recorded from our own sun. Oh, and some of these pumpkin stars measure up to 10 times larger than our own sun as well. So let's just put our collective positive energies together and really hope that one of these bad boys doesn't decide to go supernova near our planet anytime soon because, well, we would probably either die an instant or slow painful radioactive death. This next one goes to show just how many dangers there are out in space and how much chaos can be caused when these dangers come into contact with Earth. This is a satellite image of a giant sized crater in the Arizona desert. It's called the Behringer Crater and was created 50,000 years ago by a meteor. It's 3,900 feet in diameter and 560 feet deep. It was created with the exploding force of 2.5 million tons of TNT, which is about 150 times the force of the Hiroshima atomic blast. Just a little reminder that we're always on the verge of complete and utter destruction. Uh, so yeah, NASA really needs to get those meteor destroying lasers made as fast as possible. Next up, we have our inevitable doom, illustrated in a generated photo released by NASA showcasing the inevitable head-on collision of our own galaxy with a neighboring galaxy by the name of Andromeda. You might have heard of it. When this happens, it is predicted by NASA that our our sun will be flung into a new region of the galaxy, leaving Earth and our entire solar system to become frigid, lifeless, and inhospitable. The event is scheduled to take place 4 billion years from now. And this information was discovered using the Hubble telescope, an extremely powerful satellite along with some extremely complicated data processing that I cannot even begin to understand because I am a YouTuber, not a rocket scientist working for NASA. Anyways, these scientists and astronomers have been able to track the trajectory of the Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxies as well as their speed, and it's looking like a head-on collision. One more thing, if you're one of those people who think three is a crowd, you'll be happy to know that while the majority of the cataclysmic collision will solely be between Andromeda and our own Milky Way, there is a third party at play, the Triangulum Galaxy, which is actually racing against the Andromeda in an effort to merge with the Milky Way first. Everyone wants a piece of the Milky Way. Uh, so what would you guess this satellite image is? Could it be an alien crop circle, and an ancient geoglyph? Well, it turns out it's actually a Scientology property, Trementina Base. Now, why is this on a scary things list? Um, what can I say? I just find Scientology really creepy, especially because we really don't know exactly what goes on behind closed doors, which is extra bad considering all the dark stuff that's actually come out about this cult over the years. The purpose of this property is actually pretty silly though. According to the Church of Scientology, this huge complex is used to house the works of Al Ron Hubbard. Uh, they store all his writings there, you know, to keep him safe. From all the uh, from all the enemy forces that want to read his books, I guess. Some of his writing has also even been etched into steel tablets and buried here. Sure. All right. Next up, we have the C.W. Leonis, a dying star surrounded by an orange cloud of carbon. Carbon being the baseline of all known life. The carbon cloud was created by the star's destruction, as its outermost layers were thrown into the vast expansion of space. And the carbon itself, found in the space dust making up the carbon cloud, was created through something called nuclear fission, which took place inside of the star's interior. Now, nuclear fission happens when neutron stars smash together, creating super heavy elements, heavier than anything you're gonna find on the periodic table. When the elements break down, they give birth to organic elements, such as, in this case, 
carbon. This is an incredible discovery as the CW Leonis is the closest carbon star to Earth, coming in at just 400 light years away. And the death of this star has given astronomers a chance to observe the interactions between a dying carbon star's magnetic field and its surroundings. It also shows us just how possible it is for the beginning stages of life to exist, further supporting the theory that we are not alone in this universe and possibly not even even in this galaxy. Next up we have a mysterious red lake. It all started when satellite images showed a lake in Iraq that was pure deep red. So naturally, everyone was like, what's going on with that lake? And to this day, we still don't know 100%. Well, one possibility is pollution. There could be industrial waste and chemicals, sewage, just contaminating the lake, turning it red. Factories sometimes dump their waste into nearby water, causing all sorts of strange changes in color. There could also be something natural going on. Certain types of algae or bacteria can bloom in water and have been known to create red pigments in the water. This is known as red tide. It's usually seen in the ocean, but it can happen in lakes and rivers as well. There could also be a concentration of iron-rich minerals in the water. These minerals can oxidize and create this rusty red color. There's also another rumor that there's a place where they kill animals uh, close to the lake, and well, you know where I'm going with that. So these explanations, they do make sense, but the exact cause is still a mystery. And finally, we have the discovery of hidden Egyptian pyramids. In 2011, using satellite images from NASA, Sarah Perrick from the University of Alabama at Birmingham discovered 17 new structures in the famous lost city of Tanis, Egypt, which turned out to be undiscovered ancient Egyptian pyramids. Along with the pyramids, Perrick also discovered 1,000 smaller tombs located within Egypt. Using the same method, satellites, Sarah went on to discover even more hidden archaeological sites around the world. She is now hoping to discover the lost civilization of Peru and has even launched her own satellite program in 2016 called Global Explorer, that's X-P-L-O-R-E-R, -E to aid her in her search. The discovery of the pyramids and other ancient structures using satellite imaging has led scientists to the conclusion that, in regards to ancient ruins, we have only really found about 10% of what's actually out there. A pretty daunting and incredibly exciting fact. I just hope with this new technology we don't go unearthing ourselves any ancient curses. Fingers crossed, but I really still would like to see us find Cleopatra's tomb. So fingers crossed with that too. Wouldn't that be a big video? If they found that, oh, oh yeah. Report the news of Cleopatra's tomb yeah. being found. For your news. Come to us. Exactly. All right, we will catch you uh, in the next video. That we will.